Good evening. Today we are here again to meet over Discover Design by the JS Institute of Design. Welcome once again, and I'm really happy to see the participants who keep on coming back to us for more and more. Let me explain what this Discover Design is. It's a series of uh, webinars which is going to inform you on what design is, who all do design, what happens in design, what is the industry like, what is the opinion of people who work in the industry, and much more. We bring to you today Koelika Kohli, who is going to talk about a space has personality. I mean, there are many things attributed, of course, to spaces, uh, many adjectives which describe it, but to give it a personality, wow, that's something that I'd, I'd like to hear more about. So, uh, my name is Nancy L. Uh, I'm the head of the JS Institute of Design, uh, having many years of experience in the field of practice itself, but also I've been an educator for more than two decades. My purpose of conducting the webinars is to bring to you, all of you, uh, designers, practitioners, experts, professionals who have been in the field, who know a lot of insights, who have ways of working, and very generously have agreed to share with you what they think about their work. So uh, let me um, introduce Kolika to you. I as uh, I know her as uh, the, the founder of K2 India, along with her mother, Sunita Kohli, a Padma Shri awardee. And more than that, I think Koelika has come into her own with her education at Pratt Institute uh, in architecture. Uh, and she started this company with her mother and they are looking at, look, they do interiors, not only for residential spaces, but also in, um, in restoration, in uh, hospitality, and many more. You're probably going to hear a lot more about that. More details will follow in our conversation. Uh, they put together their uh, K2 India, having combined many of their, their um, businesses together, and they, these are Koelika Kohli Architects, where the architecture and project management cell combined with Sunita Kohli Interior Design, Private Limited, um, into the K2 India. Now, I'm going to invite Koelika to talk a lot more, a little bit more about herself before she starts on with the project. But before that, let me invite you to ask questions as we go along. Uh, please feel free to ask any questions in the Q&A section. We will take it up once the session is over and we will have time to answer all your questions. Koilika is going to be patiently answering them. And just in case we are not able to finish with all the questions, she has agreed to come back later with the, quest, uh, with the answers to us and we will be dispersing the same to you. So welcome Koilika. Uh, thank, you. We, thank you. Thank you. I think while time. we are talking, would you like to talk a little bit more about yourself before you go on to the kind of work you do? Sure. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you for the generous introduction. Um, so, by training, I'm a carpenter actually, and interiors are something too because um, my mother is a designer. And um, so, um, my I moved back, actually, I studied in, um, I had the privilege of studying in America, and I moved back uh, to India in 2005. Because I joined my mother's company, and, uh, and that's where I had, um, sorry, is my internet connection playing up? Because someone's saying we can't see you. Yeah, I think we'll have to check it up, Harshita. Can you do a look into that? No, can you see me now? Because I've just played around with my connection. Am I good? I can see you. Okay. Okay. All right. uh, I, I'm sure that they're going to look into this. Okay. So, okay, it's they're still saying they're not able to see you. Um, 
I think at the back end, will you advise them to probably log out and come in again? We can yeah. see. Some of them can. So the ones who can't will have to log out and check in again. All right. Well, hopefully they can uh, they can hear me properly. So that probably may do the job. All right. Um, so I, um, um, I I moved back in two thousand five and I set up my own kind of shop in terms of I, I decided I wanted to practice architecture. Um, I had worked um, for many years. Uh, in fact, all through college I had worked, and um, I had worked both. Um, I had the privilege of working under in Norman Foster's office. And then I worked uh, on private residences um, in New York under Oliver Cope Architects. And when I moved back in 2005, I, um, it was a tough move because A, I had been living abroad for a long time. I'd been studying abroad. And then when I moved back, uh, I wanted to establish my own, uh, my own voice and my own, uh, my own sensibility in what I considered my passion, which is design and architecture. So I did everything from little, um, factory sheds to um, small um, 500 square foot um, shops, uh, small restaurants, I did everything. I, I played around the field and just kind of got experience in there. And then, and then as, as you mentioned, I, in 2010, um, I set up K2 India with my mom because eventually uh, she said, uh, you know, what is this? You don't want anything to do with me. And I was like, no, no, that's not that at all. <laughs> all mothers have such complaints. <laughs> I said, but, you know, professionally, I wanted to kind of know, I, I wanted to have uh, confidence in myself and in my own voice of, uh, and the direction I was taking as an architect and a designer. Mm -hmm. um, so since today we're talking about spaces having personalities, um, I'm going to take you down a little journey with me. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to do that and hopefully... Did that work? Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes, it is visible. Okay, okay wonderful. So, um, uh, so like I said, I mean, uh, although I am I'm, I, by, prof by profession, actually by training, I'm an architect and a carpenter, but by profession, I'm an architect, designer, and, and a furniture manufacturer. Mm -hmm. And um, the reason I want to take you down this journey with me is because since 2013, we have been taking part in uh, India Design, which is uh, the probably the most established uh, uh, established design fair in India today. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm not taking you back till 2015. I'm only taking you back five years to 2015. And the reason for that is because since 2015, we have always taken uh, the same space. We are placed uh, at the entrance of a pavilion and you can see our exhibition space even from outside. And then as soon as you come in, it's bang, we have, and we've held it for five years. And so it's, it's approximately about 600 square feet. It's about 30 by 20 feet in, in size. And this image in front of you right now is actually from 2015. In 2015, um, what we did to this space is we actually created uh, kind of three spaces because we created shop windows in kind of shop windows in front uh, before you walked into the space. Mm -hmm. Now, for me, my reactions to spaces is, uh, it's intuitive and it's emotional. Um, and one of the reasons I want to show you these spaces is because I feel it's one of the, um, sorry, I'm just figuring out. Yeah. Uh, because I feel it's actually one of the hardest, uh, uh, one of the hardest projects that we, we do each year. We go into a same space we mm. redefine the sensibility we want to give it, and we mm. redefine the personality we want to give to that space. Um, at the, I mean, of course, where, where, where do spaces get their personality from? Spaces get their personality from um, the creator, who right. is the maestro, yeah. and uh, the people who use it, who are like the orchestra of that space. Um, so in 2015, we, 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 we created two kind of shop windows in the middle of it, we created a view into the space. We had a eight, we had a five or six foot fireplace below it, which uh, it was quite funny because we used to have people like bending down and looking through to see because the whole idea, it's my belief that um, design should evoke cu curiosity. Mm -hmm. And the human mind is attracted to curiosity. We have a very, we, you know, we, we, we like to be, 
um, we, we are curious about things and I think it's important that that curiosity allow, is allowed to grow and it builds an interest. Um, the, protag the protagonist in this particular uh, space was a 25 foot uh, log or uh, tree log, which I had, which mm -hmm. I didn't slice in half. I bought half of it, um, mm -hmm. and I placed in the center as the um, as the dining table. Mm -hmm. It was. Um, uh, I have to say, it was a really. Uh, it was. A, I mean, I loved it personally, mm -hmm. uh, but it was very intriguing, and um, a lot of people were very inquisitive. They about it and how we how we juxtaposed it with the lights which were selected in order to bring in um, something which was organic and free flowing with already something which was organic yet added a modern touch and color to the whole space right um, I showed I'm showing you these close-ups just to say that you know I believe personality comes also from history and things being biographical. Um, it, on the, in the left image, you see, it's actually a long, the entire 30 foot, approximately 30 foot of that stall was um, a, you know, a unit which had a bar, a desk, uh, a sideboard, um, a storage space for books, for artifacts, uh, and the pichwai as you see in, in the middle of it. Um, the, the view below, the view to the right side, I'm showing you because it was this, this interaction that I wanted my space to have with the visitor, um, not just the one who was inside my stall, but also the one walking around my stall. I often get asked as to why um, I choose not to close my stalls up. A lot, a lot of you who uh, often go to exhibition space may notice that um, a lot of exhibition space shut themselves up and then they have a door to allow you into their space. Um, I kind of have a different take to that. And um, for me, it's also sometimes, it's quite funny, I step outside my stall and I watch people looking around my stall. And there's a learning in that of how uh, people react to what you've put together. Uh, because at the end of the day, uh, we design so that uh, we can bring out emotions in people. That's a very key element of designing. So I have a question for you, Koelika. I've been hearing you talk about intuition, emotion, curiosity, a lot to do with your primal feelings. And that's very interesting to know that designers, if you were to work with those very base feeling, does it work for you every time? Let's suppose you come into the space again the next year. Do you still go by that instinct? Do you still give such a lot of weightage to your feelings. And is that the reason why you feel your space acquires a kind of a personality because of that? Um, uh, that's frankly, it's a very interesting question. Is, you know, I also personality, um, the same, right? They might, my core the same, may, may be the same over time change we evolve as human beings where mm -hmm. does that come from um you know i uh, i it's from conversations it's from travel it's from reading it's from during covid it's been a lot of introspection it's about looking at old photographs um when i come along this this five-year journey that i'm showing you i'll give you an example the last one i did in 2020 and this year was a complete reaction to a holiday i had uh, in december so um it's i think for me, um, a concept kind of immediately crystallizes in my mind's eye. I know what I want to do. The reason a space like this is hard because creator, and in a way, I'm also the client because I'm trying to appeal to other people like me who may be making a wanting to, or you know, are interested in design and people who are interested in making a home or mm -hmm. uh, you know, redoing a singular room. It is. Um, even to design a single home, a single space, uh, it brings in years and years of visual vocabulary built over years of study and travel and observation. Um, so, you know, just because of, pro and sometimes, uh, you know, I, 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 it's, I roll my eyes sometimes when I listen to clients tell me, but it's such a small project, so why this fee? Or, you know, mm -hmm. but, but it's just a couple of rooms and it's, it's not about it being a couple of rooms. It's about how you have trained your mind 
And mm. like I said, for me, it's almost an immediate reaction. Even though I know what I want to bring to the space, I now need to connect that back to the client who's going to be using it. Correct. And I now want to look at another question, another point which you mentioned just before this. You said that you wanted to intentionally keep the space open because open, keeping it open is communicating in some language to the viewers who are going to pass by. And do you, what could that be? Could you help us understand how are viewers, not only viewers at the exhibition, but let us assume that in an interior space in the homes, if you were to keep such an open vista around you, what does it sort of make the space feel like? Well, you know, in, in times of social distancing, it's a very complex question. Uh, because when we decide to design spaces like this, and also when we go into homes and we create a certain openness between family spaces and lounges, etc., uh, the idea is, um, see, in, in, in family homes, the idea is to create connectivity. There must be a physical, mm -hmm. um, um, you must be able to physically see through. Also, it brings in light, and, I, and I'm showing one of the, one, a, pro a project of mine where I'll explain to you how I'm doing that. But coming back to an exhibition space, um, you know, exhibition spaces are hard because you have, you've invested all this money and you have to, you have to, uh, somebody who's visited you has to leave with a certain amount of uh, retention of what they've seen. So there's a lot of also impact value that you have to create. Um, for me, it's also, it's a buildup of curiosity. Like I said, the reason I leave my spaces open is because I, I, I make them inviting from the point go that you enter the pavilion and you see us and we want you to come in, but you also, we also want you to experience it from outside. And I, in general, like I said, I, uh, uh, I love watching people looking at my work. You know, it's okay. one of those things I think is a huge learning for me and That's how they react to my work. Uh, That's wonderful too. A lot of people can be very polite work but when you observe someone's it, it may be polite and it may not be very uh, I, I'm really happy to hear that you observe people looking at your work and and that's something so sensitive you know in some ways also very private and I love the way you have put it but I want to make once one comment before we move out of the slide because I've been looking at the table such a raw piece of uh, outside nature being brought in. It has to be really basic. It has to be that instinctual kind of a uh, decision that you make, you know? Uh, and I really think that takes a bold way of thinking. Uh, and if, if your interior can uh, have a combination of the nature outside, the raw or rawness of such a trunk as a table, along with perhaps really fine china, fine furniture and polished floor, it must be saying something. Do you normally do that often? Um, again, it so depends on your client, right? Um, you're absolutely right. This was a very bold move. Uh, and because it was uh, the first time we were in this space, um, well, you know, we were visible from the front, we were open on um, the table as the prot protagonist was all very scary uh, mm. thought. It could work and it couldn't work. But, you know, the best designers are also those who take risk. I mean, you have to believe in yourself. Um, you, you have to believe of the possibility. And I'm, I'm, I'm constantly challenging myself. Right, because I think that's the only way you keep moving forward and you keep evolving as a designer because you have to constantly challenge your own work, which doesn't mean you have to constantly uh, compare it to others at all. That's not what I'm suggesting, but you mm -hmm. have to constantly challenge yourself because that's what's going to make you continue to research and push yourself forward. Right. Thank you so much. Good to know that. Are we this moving? Was this was the following year. Uh, in 2016, um, again, we had two sides. It's two sides open. Um, to the right, we had um, a beautiful long gas fireplace, which was about 16 feet long. It was uh, the wall that, in, uh, that uh, it was built into had a very natural, very, very deep pink uh, wallpaper on it with um, photos of, I'll show you in the next image actually. Uh, but the reason I'm showing you this image is primarily because 
um, you know, me engaging the seal, whoever is in the space. So we've used these uh, hand-blown glass lights from a company called Baki, which have miniature plants. All of them, believe it or not, in 2016, we were doing this and we were thinking about air purification when, you know, I think everyone really started thinking about it in 2018. Right. Um, so they are, they, they are plants that purify the air. To the left um, of this photograph is actually a, a very talented friends of mine who are artists who work with thread. And the art is, is, um, is sandwiched between two plexiglass glasses and framed to create a partition as well. And therefore there's light coming in. They, you can see through, but yet you can't really see through. So again, this sense of creating curiosity and mystery is something that we've played with. Also like color that we've used um, very subtly because we've taken the color from the, the artwork bringing it to the console and then uh, even the old bullpit which sits in the center um, has hues of uh, pink in it. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so here you can see actually you can see how low those lights come down so they start engaging the ceiling with people who are either sitting or moving you want to look up you know you are you are intrigued and, and, uh, 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 and then they are juxtaposed with Something very new. Uh, I think this was the first, this light. Uh, not it, it's definitely the first, first launch of this light in India, but even internationally, it was one of the first launches of this light. And um, on that old Mughal carpet sits, uh, you know, 200 million years old petrified wood pieces used as coffee tables. So here you've got something which is very old, very new, bringing the outdoors in. Uh, why again? What is the, what, what am I trying to do to the space, right? For me, it's again my personality coming in because I love the outdoors. I love making this connection with the outdoors. Mm -hmm. And then uh, having lived in cold climate for a long time, having studied there in England and then the US, uh, I love fireplaces. So um, it's, 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 it's connecting the things that, I, that make me feel like I'm in a home and not a house. There's this immediate connection that I want to create when I talk about a space like that, that I just want people to come in. And in fact, it happens very, very often uh, that people just come and lounge around, you know, and they're oh, and they're taking the space in because they feel like it's part of their living room. Um, I have the black and white Mahata, so we didn't use any other strong artwork. We have the black and white um, Mahatas of uh, uh, black and white photographs of uh, taken by Mahatta of uh, Delhi was being constructed. Correct. By this, you know, we build a palette. Mm -hmm. a palette um, comes together. I mean, frankly, we can never see the space before because we don't do 3Ds and all that. We just go in there, you know, and it's instinctive. It is instinctive. Mm -hmm. This is the space the next year round. Um, so this is 2017. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, again, this, I have the spaces open on, on two sides. I've created a screen with the artwork, which is a thread art that we've pulled across um, this 30, you know, across the 30 foot long wall. Um, and uh, we've, uh, we, we've, we've played and recreated what, I mean, we, keep, we continue to play with the space and see what else can it do for us. In this particular scenario, we made it as a casual lounge. We have this mm -hmm. moss colored green wall with these hanging bookshelves, uh, mm -hmm. which is quite a task because they were very heavy because all the shelves were built out of uh, soda light stone. And soda light is from, um, it, it's actually a beautiful, beautiful uh, deep blue stone. Right. Uh, again, we engage the ceiling by, you know, these different level hanging lights, um, all hand blown from, from Bucky again. Mm -hmm. uh, on that moss green wall, we have photographs, which um, are sketches of, uh, of, um, of, you know, of Delhi. And, um, and again, you see, it's very, one of the things that happens is because like I said in this, I am the creator and I'm also the client in many ways. It is a lot of what is dear to me and what matters to me. Uh, my city is um, where I live is a very crucial part of who I am. Mm -hmm. And I'm a very rooted, even as, I mean, even as a human being, even a designer, I'm a, very, I'm a very rooted person to my work. Um, you know, even though it may be juxtaposed with things which are very modern, but I think that's what makes 
something which is timeless. And that's like I said, I think personalities are built from history and things which are biographical. Right. So I've been noticing in your uh, the last two uh, slides of the ceiling, you seem to be really engaging with the ceiling in a very meaningful way. Uh, and, and that's like literally bringing the ceiling down to the floor for people who are going to be using the space to, to help them interact with the ceiling, which is up there. Normally, you don't see that happen. Ceiling seems to be a far away space for many people. Now, that's interesting. If you're going to do that, does it mean to say, so many of us engage with walls by putting up paintings and bookshelves and many other things, whereas, of course, the grounds have our furniture, perhaps the floor covering and other pieces of furniture. Are you saying the ceiling is now going to be equally important for all designers to bring them down to the level of interacting with people, people who live in their space? Um, well, yes and no. I think it's a personal choice, frankly. Uh, you know, um, a lot of the museums we go to, to, we visit today are old buildings which have been converted into beautiful museum spaces. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they've been renovated and restored, etc. And you'll notice that uh, um, a, lot of, a lot of these spaces have very, very high ceilings. Uh, and you are always interested in looking up to the ceilings because of the arches or the way they're finished or uh, the paintings that are on them, right? Absolutely. Whereas in modern times, we will use beautiful architectural lighting, but our ceilings would usually be relatively plain. Sure. So I, as a designer and an architect, am very intrigued about using the entire space, right? Including the ceiling. And yes, of course, we've always hung chandeliers, but they usually come down from a single point. And I think this too is art. So when you talk about using your walls for art, this is a lighting installation. It, when, when you use pieces like this, this is, this is art, you know, it's, a, it's, it's, um, it's, it, it's light art. Wonderful. I think that's a, that's, that will be very useful for our participants to start understanding. Designers have started making their signature marks, perhaps through different ways. And this I see Koelika seems to really be catching my eye at least. <laughs> All right. So, okay. So this is just, you know, the last shot of the space, which shows you um, how all of it comes together, that moss green back wall, those black and white, uh, um, the, the, pen, the pen and ink sketches of Delhi, uh, you know, the hanging bookshelves, which, mm -hmm. um, which again, have, have books, but also artifacts. Um, the, mm -hmm. Again, I've used an old Mughal carpet, and then I've used an ash pink fabric on the sofas. So how does color play a role? Now, uh, imagine this is the same space that we are, we, are, we are redoing and completely changing the palette as well. Because as you know, color is very critical, right? It, it plays with your emotions. It can make you feel certain things. And uh, so this time, the space was really about feeling um, comfortable, feeling happy, feeling like you want to lounge, uh, but yet having a certain sophistication about it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've used all sorts of materials and I think mm -hmm. that is what makes spaces interesting because the coffee tables are actually made of brass and we've washed it with acid to create this, this roughness to it. And then we've created this, you know, geometric pattern that you see used as coffee tables in the middle. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's just a close up of, the, of how things engaging in terms of height. So I just wanted to put that image in to show you that. Right. Um, now this is the year, the next year. Right. Mm -hmm. This is 2018. And um, um, all right. So we have a, okay, we are going to give you a break. You've been talking and I want to let you just rest a while. In the meantime, we have poll, a poll question for all our participants and let's see what they have to say. In a lifestyle fair, like what Koelika has been showing us, the exhibition space displays or communicates the following. And what is that? the trend direction or philosophy of the studio or future technologies technologies yeah futuristic technologies let's see what you have to say and i'm going to ask koelika what she thinks overall uh, oh there is the answer and I want to know whether you agree with this or what I do you have to say? I, I, also, I also put in my vote. Uh, 
So it, it is the philosophy. I think it is the philosophy of the studio. Okay. You know, trends are there to stay and go. Right. That's not what true design is about. Design is there to, and I think this is what is very, very important for, um, uh, for even young designers to understand. It's mm -hmm. not about being trending. It's about creating timeless design. You know, design that you can go back to and still relate and go, wow, I love this. You know, it's so mm -hmm. fresh and new. Um, so that's, and, and, that's the, and that's the impact we also like to create because obviously we want to create a recall value when someone comes to, to visit us. Um, and the personality we show there is the fact that we can evolve and adjust and, uh, you know, add to the personality of the client we're also going to be designing for. Right. So this particular space in 2018, again, the same space, same size, everything is, um, you know, it's, 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 um, it has a certain masculinity to it, but it's, um, it's androgronous masculinity where it's, it's a very balanced approach to uh, what we were trying to do. Um, <clears throat> so we've got vineyard, walnut veneer walls at the back. You know, we've played with brown and gray tones. We still have that old Mughal carpet on the floor. We've had these uh, white tone, off white and white tones, which come in from the ceiling and also from the lights, as you can see, the decorative lights, as you can see. Mm -hmm. That's another shot of it, uh, where on the right side, we've used these, again, these partitions to create, uh, you know, an, uh, to create an ex in, inside outside experience, which is, an, it's, it's, it's black, but it's, in, it's inspired by an artist uh, who I quite like called Mondrian. In the middle, you'll see a slit, uh, a, a slim fireplace, which is about eight feet long, and the horizont horizontality of that fireplace uh, um, is kind of slit with the verticality of the bookshelf that one created uh, in that image. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, in, in that uh, exhibition space. You can see it more clearly now in the left image, what I was trying to say. Now again, tones, we, we, you know, we, we, we use the grays, we use the browns, we use the dark browns, the charcoals, uh, and then a stone, which also ties it all in together using that, those same tones. So nothing is shouting for attention here. It's mm -hmm. a quiet space. You know, yet um, it could be used as a study, it could be used as a lounge, but mm -hmm. um, it, is, it is much quiet and quieter than what we were doing previously. So uh, in your experience, Koilika, is there ever or has it ever been that there has been a clash of titanic personalities? I mean, I can see your work philosophy. You seem to be having a very strong bend towards certain elements, certain forms, certain colors. Um, and I'm very sure that you might come across clients who probably would like their kind of identity to be much louder in their space. How do you deal with that? Um. So, you know, by the way, before, uh, before, uh, especially because we do a lot of homes, uh, I think it's very important that a client understands you and you understand a client. Uh, if someone comes to me and says, um, you know, they want the Taj Mahal, then I'm not the, I'm not the architect for them. You know? <laughs> and I think it's very important to identify that. Don't forget, you know, uh, any good architect and designer will tell you, your work is the work you do, and especially homes that you do, is an investment of your time. And uh, time is your most precious commodity today, right? And if you're going to invest your time into a project, please remember as architects and designers, we are also only as good as our last projects. So mm -hmm. every project has to bring about meaning. It has to have a representation of what A, your philosophy is, mm -hmm. what you want to bring out there as a designer and architect, architect, while of course, taking on the personality traits of the client you're working with. So um, to answer that question very politely, um, <laughs> find a way to get out of that project. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> okay. So a uh, young uh, young participants or aspirants hearing Koelika talk, uh, well, this is to say subtly that she has reached a level of confidence where she can probably, you know, really work it out with the client. What is it that can be projected and what should be, what would be her way to do it. So that's lovely to hear that. Um, you have been honest about it. So let's see what is it, the, what are the other things that I can find about you? 
So this is 2019. Now, this was very interesting because, uh, you know, uh, I, I got asked a lot about, um, uh, but you know, your mom, she's been practicing design for so long. And, um, you know, she has a very classical out, outlook to life and to her work. And I said, no, my mom is highly, con she's extremely contemporary, right? So this was, um, and, and I think people felt that because um, her own home she is very biographical. She has beautiful, beautiful artifacts and objects from um, all over India and the world, which she uses. Um, and uh, believe it or not, she can probably tell you a story about each one of those objects and where she got it and where it was found and how she bought it and, um, and, and all of that. And I think that's what makes actually our home, her home, a home, right? right. Um, and, it's, and it's so important and precious to her. This was an approach where um, we wanted to, um, we, 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 it was, it was created with the desire to conceive a space where we seamlessly merging the synergy a contemporary style and a contemporary classic style of furniture. Um, we've, um, we, um, you know, we used, sorry, my internet was playing up. Um, we've used um, artifacts, like I said, artifacts and objects uh, from uh, all over India, uh, in brass, in bronze, uh, and in glass, to juxtapose with this furniture. I think people sometimes uh, forget that things can be used together beautifully. It's just a question of having uh, uh, the right approach and that, and that fine eye of how to do it. Mm -hmm. um, the lights are completely contemporary. They were launched for the first time in, in India. Um, and these are, these are lights by a company called Mui and they call Mishmatic, uh, and they are inspired by the old Chinese, uh, lanterns. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, the color tone of this uh, entire space, believe it or not, uh, you know, it, it goes, you, if you go, if you, any of you ever been to the summer palace of Tipu Sultan in Karnataka, you'll see the palette is very, very similar from there. Oh. So. Uh, you know, spaces have um, a racial memory. They have a collective memory, mm. and uh, and that's and that's what makes them interesting and intriguing and builds up this curiosity. And that's what I believe homes should be about. True. True, and I can imagine with each of these this artifacts and colors, you probably have stories around it. I mean, it should have stories. That is what is going to make it a home. So the narrative oh, of the home is going to be different. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. This is what I was talking to you about when you asked me that question on uh, does how, over years do you find it difficult uh, mm -hmm. to work because or, or do things change? So uh, we did this this year in 2020. This was the mm -hmm. same space done in 2020. Mm -hmm. And um, I happened to be, have gone off uh, on a holiday a couple of months before that. Uh, to, uh, we went to a place which were full uh, homes by the beach. Don't know what, right? Some there was to be something in me that now wanted to make a space that made you feel like you were in a beach villa, right? And that is what transpired. So we, I, I, I looked at colors that come out of the come out of the ocean and the beach, and we put that entire palette together, and we started building a story around it of how we were going to turn it into a beautiful space, which was calming. Uh, it was inviting. And um, I have to say, a lot of people loved this because it had this huge, large sofa and everyone came and plonked themselves there and refusing to leave. And I'm like, you know, I'm actually, <laughs> even my friends who came to visit me, uh, yeah. and, you know, it was a mix of, um, uh, it was a mix of a palette, which was uh, a subtle and, um, and calming. So again, what I wanted to, uh, it was about how I wanted the visitor to feel. That right. is what my, that, that is what I wanted my space my my space to uh, talk about, and uh, and the reaction I wanted my my visitor to have. Right. So this was two thousand and uh, this was two thousand and twenty, and that's just another shot of the space. You know, um, and all the okay. different materials we use from volcanic uh, stone planters to um, uh, you know to very very neutral tones and mother of pearl on that console that you see on the right. Uh, again, we use a lot of. I mean, we've used. Uh, it's, it's, it, it, we've used a whole um, uh, materials here, which we've, the way you usually use it um, in order to bring about the palette we wanted to create. 
Um, <clears throat> So, Thank you for sharing such a lot of insight into every bit of every year that you have been thinking about. Okay, wow, this looks really different. What is it? So, um, so actually, I, I, there was a very particular reason I wanted I put I put this project in. So this is the first. Uh, so this is my home. Um, well, okay, we have wait, Koelika, sorry, we can talk about that. But before that, we have a poll. Let's look at uh, what the participants have to say about a holiday home. Now, this is to conjure up in your own mind, start visualizing what a holiday home should be. Should it be a home away from home? Visually, of course, in terms of comfort, yes, but visually, an informal and relaxed setting, okay, think about that, and must represent your personality. So three answers for you. Let's see what gets the maximum approval. All right, there it is. Oh, well, what do you think about it? And um, well, it's a bit of everything because it should be a home away from home and it should yeah. be an informal and relaxed setting and it must represent your personality. So that's kind of a trick question over there. <laughs> I tell you, I, I guess, I guess um, they would have liked something like above, you know, all three of the above. Uh, next time we can think of that in the board. Yes, please tell um, us. So actually, this 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 project is very close to my heart because um, it's my home, mm -hmm. and uh, it's 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 the it's the first home I actually built after um, for myself um, and my family, and uh, um, this was in in two thousand and twelve actually I would I would I think it's yeah two thousand and twelve, uh, and this is the entrance of of my home. And as you can see, my, my lovely dog is sitting there posing away for this photograph. Yeah. Didn't want to be left out of anything. Mm -hmm. So this is the entrance porch where, again, I use these old South Indian columns, uh, which belong to my mother. And they were over 100 years old. And usually one would have had a pitched roof on it or done something probably more... Um, probably not this modern, I would imagine. Whereas I went in there and, you know, uh, put eye sections across it and I didn't cover the top of it just to hold them down so you know they wouldn't fall because we have very bad storms here um, and I didn't cover it because the two trees that had been grown on either side of it had uh, were, were so large that we were already getting enough shade in that area so this was a kind of take which is which again is very representative of my own personality because I'm I have a very uh, I'm very technologically savvy, yet I'm very modern, but yet I like to keep my own design, my own personality, like I said, is very, very rooted um, in the country that I belong to, which is India. Yes, so let's see now, what else do you have in this? So this is, um, so this is the, this is the living, it's a, so it's a small space, this is the living and dining room of that home. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think um, when we were doing this, um, a, you know, my mother being a designer, my father, who's not a trained architect or a trained designer, is truly the architect in the house. Uh, and both my kids were young at this particular time, and we have a beautiful pool outside. And uh, it was a tough one to decide, you know, how we were going to, what furniture we were going to use, because everyone in the family had an opinion. And at the end of the day, it is a family home. And I think that's very important to hear everyone's opinion. Sure. Uh, in this in this regard eventually you'll see we have two outdoor day beds which actually were bought for the pool side which have we, we have ended up using as the sofas in this particular place um, you know it's very quiet it's simple um, it's home um, and it gives you a break and again uh, you know i say this because there is so much going on around you uh, especially when you're in the city, in like city in Delhi, there's a also a lot of visual indigestion and um, you sometimes just want to break, right? And as a designer, you want to go into a space which just allows you to breathe. It gives you a fresh of a breath of fresh air rather than something which is, um, you know, loud and screaming at you. And um, it's, it's a home we've all enjoyed. We, we, you know, and we all find it uh, we all go there at different times, not even always together. And it is something that um, keeps, every time we go there, we never want to come back to the city. So for us, it is a home away from a home. It has all the comforts of our home in the city. Um, we, the, I just wanted to show you this image because I love what I did with the staircase. And it has two, it has two staircases because the central structural wall couldn't come down. Mm -hmm. And um, so this has two staircases, one that leads into my uh, 
my parents' room and one into my kids' room. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the lounge which overlooks the pool, um, you know, and this is one area where we use a little bit of pop of color. We love books. We love watching films. And all of that um, is here for us to enjoy. Um, this is my parents' room. Uh, so it mm -hmm. has an old tribal carpet. It has uh, Kali Ghat paintings. Really that, um, my but I'm just asking something which you just mentioned. I've heard of visual block in your mind and I'm hearing a visual indigestion. Wow, that's a word. <laughs> I think I, I really would like to know what is that? Uh, I, I mean, I, we are bombarded with so much of exactly well thought out combinations. So what would visual indigestion be? I think we are also bombarded with uh, a lot of stuff which is not uh, necessary. I do not believe in embellishments. Uh, mm -hmm. I think um, to each their own, but I believe a home um, speaks volumes and sometimes a lot more than even the clothes you wear or the jewelry you, you decide to wear. And um, I think it's very important what you put out there as your home, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and when I talk about visual indigestion, I really mean, uh, you know, with Instagram and Pinterest and so many other social platforms, um, including what you sometimes get to see in a, in a, in a, in a city like Delhi, because, you know, we are, our, our laws for construction are so poor. Mm -hmm. right? We have a beautiful home on one side and the next house could look like, because, you know, he had a desire to build a Spanish villa. Right? Mm -hmm. So that is what I mean by visual indigestion, yeah. right? Because we are visual people. That's, that's, that's I think very well know. understood. <laughs> I really like that. <laughs> okay, so uh, Koilika, we have a lot of questions waiting for you, but um, let's carry on. Okay, and just quickly, I this yeah. used to show you how differently this was my parents' room, right. my room, uh, mm -hmm. my kids' room, and uh, we took all their stuffed toys and again made a light installation out of them mm -hmm. because they didn't want to get rid of them. So we said we'll do something different. And as they were growing old, we took it onto the ceiling. Mm -hmm. uh, so I like connecting back to the ceiling, mm -hmm. I guess. Yes, um, this is again, you know, the, the image on the left is one of the bathrooms which has no light coming in. Mm -hmm. So I used a very natural stone on the wall to create that feeling of being in the outdoors because all the other rooms are beautifully well lit. Mm -hmm. uh, the massage room is by the pool. It gives you that feeling of being in a resort, being on a holiday, which is something we all love to feel as much as we can. Um, so that is what we kind of did with this particular project. Um, very I'm quickly to see that. Okay, so there we have another poll for you for the for the participants. Um, well, this is about apartment buildings or apartment homes, and um, so there are many views on that. And one of them, of course, is a restrictive space. How do you view apartment homes? Is it restrictive? Is it cozy and comfortable, or is it normally efficient and practical? So let's see how many people choose what. Oh, very quickly. Well, two points seem to be uh, running neck to neck. What do you think, Koelika? I mean, you know, apartment living is becoming very, very popular. I live in an, I live in an apartment and uh, having spent a lot of my life in New York, mm. Uh, you know, small spaces are manageable, personally. I build very large homes. I build mm -hmm. homes 30,000, 40,000 square feet. But I think, uh, you know, you can make a home out of anything. Space is, um, you know, I, I don't know whether how many people realize this, but in COVID, you really realize how much space do you really need, you know? Um, I mean, would I build more? Or would I have the outdoors more? Any day I would build less and have a space to step out. Um, so it's, it's really about what you want, but I think, uh, this particular apartment was done for, for, um, you know, relatively young. I mean, well, I wouldn't say young. I mean, they're, they're young people with, with, with teenage kids, but, um, in Magnolias in Gurgaon mm -hmm. and we, there's a lot of light coming in. They are, a, they're a lovely couple and, um, you know, they're self-made. So it's a very different approach that people who are professionals and self-made have. They want the luck. They're very well-traveled. Uh, mm -hmm. They love collecting things. And as you can see, even though this is not, this is a real project that we've done, you'll see there are objects here, which are part of the collection of the client or mm -hmm. like a pichwai, which they loved and we suggested to them. But um, they, there is a certain timelessness to this approach to design. This is the, this is the smallest sitting room in the same 
uh, in this in the same larger uh-huh. space sure. and um, again done with contemporary furniture a lot of light coming in from the front and um, it was a large space where the living dining and the small sitting was all together mm-hmm. so just to show you how um, you know we connected this this is the family lounge but we connected the lounge and the light coming in from the lounge all the way to the living room and the balcony because for this client and for us it was very important to make this connection both visually for them to be able to see their kids when they were entertaining or what or just to have a family connection uh, mm-hmm. to create open spaces but yet spaces that shut off because of air conditioning and sound etc so this was a space where they love and i in fact i i was chatting to them just 2 weeks ago and um it's about their personality and about me being e- able to understand their personality and their likes um mm. of what they really wanted in this apartment so this is it actually this is i wanted to show you two things so also. this is the truth about personalities i can almost hear you now say okay i had a very strong like or personality in the way i dealt with my interiors but i found clients who probably were equally or we were probably on similar wavelength and they seem to have fantastic taste and you ultimately came up with the products or the output or the outcome was excellent satisfying both the clients as well as well we try and they enjoyed working we try yes <laughs> that's lovely i think that's being really blessed it must mm-hmm. have been a fun project to work on and now let's go on to questions so uh, i'm going to ask uh, the questions they have already been collected over a period and let's see what it says okay so let's begin with rashmi who is us who is asking how can we come up with interesting ideas like yours and with such a clear vision oh <laughs> uh, well um i think uh, firstly um you have to be passionate about what you do and in that passion you have to um you have to keep yourself well informed you have to travel you have to be intrigued you have to be curious i know i keep repeating this word but curiosity re- can really yield some fantastic results um i i can talk about what i do um um uh, i read a lot i travel uh, and i don't mean you don't have to go you don't have to leave this country even you know we have such beauty and uh, such beautiful vocabulary even in this own country when it comes to design that uh, i don't think we take enough advantage of it so i think it's important to to travel to observe uh, not just um uh places but also people because that's when you really start becoming um you, you start understanding people you know there was a joke in college that um uh, you know it's 40% talent and 60% how good a psychologist you are so <laughs> But, well that's a great answer rashmi i hope it helps you with uh, how the way you develop yourself as a designer okay there's saloni who's asking could you please suggest the material from which your bookshelves are made i think she's mentioning the bookshelf made in the uh, in the id fair okay so if it's the it's the it's the hanging bookshelf then it was made out of brass and then the the shelves themselves were made out of a stone called soda light so they were uh, made as c sections and then fitted into uh, mm. fitted onto the brass okay so another question uh, from shreya how do you envision elements such as colors and tones to come together so well that's a it's mm. a great skill i must say so yeah, I, and i and i think you have to hone it you know um it's um i also think um a lot of it is intuitive um you can train yourself a lot of things but 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 some of this is maybe maybe it's even my good genes i don't know but <laughs> <laughs> finally you acknowledge it <laughs> yeah no 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 it is it so it's my my good my good gene pool um but again i think it's about um you know you you have to make your mistakes and finally you kind of start understanding the subtlety of colors and how to use them together um so don't be shy um mm-hmm. you know you you've got to we all we've all come out of failures many many i mean if i on another time if i start talking to them you'll be amazed how many failures i've had um but i i think you have to keep at it basically 
Correct. So on a similar line, Sandhya also has a question, similar question regarding material and elements and form that how does, how does using varied materials affect an interior space and how can one create harmony with all kinds of material that she has seen in your work? Well, you know, I've always said that it's like, uh, you know, uh, for me, um, every object has a role, every piece of furniture, uh, every color has a role, you know, uh, it's like they're all, they're all actors on a stage, right? And you have to, you have to, you have to set, you have to set up your stage and then you, you put in people who are going to occupy this space and you have to stand back and you have to see how that, ha how that, how, how those things start to react to each other. And as you get more confident and you're better and better at your work, you see that um, it all comes together very beautifully. Uh, materials is something I myself love uh, exploring with, right? And maybe that's because I, I studied as a carpenter and um, I love working with my hands. And I think um, somehow because I work with my hands a lot, I always also like to push the limit of every material. Uh, so whether it is metal, whether it is wood, we play around a lot with them uh, in order to do something different. Uh, thora, as they say, thora hatke, you know? So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, and, and we've, you know, we bring it out then we, we, we don't always get it right, but um, we get some, we learn something. They are no, they are no useless mistakes. I think you'll make a good teacher, Koilika. I can see that popping up slowly over the year, over the hour. <laughs> okay, let's see. Abai has a question for you. As work from home is increasing, so how do you balance work from home and privacy of home? How do we use the space to our advantage? So I, I think it's really about mindfulness uh, more than about design, uh, quite mm -hmm. honestly. And, um, you know, I know a lot of friends who, who so I'm an introvert, uh, my, you know, I have a, that's, that's just my personality. And for me, it was very easy working from home. In fact, it was a holiday I could have never imagined I would ever get in my life. Um, but uh, the way I dealt with it is, you know, one had to have a kind of structure through the day. And so I knew I was going to work from this hour to this hour. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of design, when you, when you come back to, uh, I mean, what you do with yourself has to do with mindfulness. Right. But when you come back to design uh, more and more spaces, uh, firstly, we're doing more we, while we do very large homes, we're also doing more and more apartments. And when we do more and more apartments and in general, when we do apartments, even my own apartment, we create spaces for multi usability. Right? And um, currently I'm sitting in what is, you know, um, my lounge and, you know, um, I, I mean, the kids and I, this, this is our lounge and I've just moved the table around a little bit. And uh, so that I could be on this call with all of you. Uh, but this is where I sit because I look out at the terrace. I know when it's raining, I know when the sun is shining, you know, I know what my dogs are doing outside or inside. And so it's really about where you can switch off, uh, whether that means you put on headphones as both my kids seem that they can study much harder when they're listening to blaring music. I don't know. Oh, yes. A little strange, yes, but that's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really, it's really about having mindfulness and finding that spot. Like I said, you know, uh, homes have to have a personality, but everyone I'll tell you uh, has a spot. I have a spot. My kids, you know, individually have a spot. My mm -hmm. dogs individually have a spot, which, which is where they go to relax and mm -hmm. where I think, and, and there's a reaction to that space. That is the reaction. That is, that is the reaction of the space they're in. Correct. So, um, well, some more, many questions still to come. Uh, is there always a clash between trends and personality as personality tends to be more stable than trends? Do you believe in that? Could you keep changing pieces and colors to suit the trends yet keep the essence of the room according to you, the personality? Do you think so? <clears throat> so it's, it's very, it's, it may not be the nicest thing to say. I don't believe in trends. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't believe, uh, you know, we have to be a society um, which is more sustainable, right? Mm -hmm. This business of creating trends and the amount we lead, just the amount of wastage we create by this concept of creating trends, us, the, you know, the clothing industry, all of us put together, we create so much waste. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not one for trends. I believe uh, there's good design and there's bad design. And I think if it's good design, uh, it is timeless design. 
So I apologize, but I think personality is something which is very personal, um, but trends is not something that I really relate to. Right. I know you, I think it was mentioned earlier and uh, perhaps it's good for people, uh, all the young participants of the session, as well as aspirants to really hear Koelika very closely, possibly listen to other designers as well who work a little differently. And ultimately you will have to make your own decision about how you want to work further. So there's a question about does good interior directly correlate in expensive maintenance? Not at all. Okay. Not at all. And uh, uh, having something which is timeless and sophisticated and charming and chic and whichever, whichever, whatever you want to relate to it, because, um, you, you know, like I said, beautiful homes have nothing to do with, um, with how much money you put into them. It, you, you can have some really beautiful homes, which are very, very humble. Uh, I mean, I don't know how many of you could see that, but my own weekend home, um, it's a very simple space. You know, it is really, really very, very simple. And we've used organic stuff um, and natural stuff. And um, I, I, don't, I don't, again, it depends on what you aspire for, but I think they, they can be, great design has, um, can be done, done in a very humble way as well. Wonderful. I think in many ways you have been answering some of these questions. So Iram is a fan. Wow, that's wonderful. He's also a very dear friend. Oh, so. Sweetly. <laughs> and apart from India, which civilization inspires you the most? Well, I think Iram, uh, I, you know, she knows because I, I talk about my days. I, I had the privilege of studying uh, uh -huh. Italy as well. And I traveled a lot through Italy. And um, I'm hugely, hugely, hugely also inspired by uh, what the works of, uh, you know, Michelangelo and Palladio. And when I was in Italy, I um, fell in love with uh, a designer called Carlo Scapa. Mm -hmm. So, um, and she's absolutely, you know, it's, it's a very interesting question because um, you can find inspiration everywhere. It's not a question of, um, I, I don't think in our visual world, you can ever be bored. Yes, you may have from time to time visual indigestion, but I think you can find, um, I, I realize you really like that term, right? I think, I think I'm going to leave you with that one. It did, it did. <laughs> but um, I think uh, designers also have to find a correlated uh, word which, which exactly expresses what they want. And that's why the language becomes richer because of, the visual, uh, you know, correlation that happens. And that's wonderful. So today, at least I have this, I'm going to take home with me, uh, along with many other beautiful things that I've seen. So uh, there are a lot of questions on personality. It seems that they are very concerned now about, so you made this very strong statement about personalities, your philosophy being a part of your work. So there are quite a few questions around that. So how do you put a palette together to design specific space as the wrong palette can mix up with the personality of a space, correct? And what are, the, what are some of the factors that you consider while you are either correcting it or the, the, which means that space to do with the personality of the space? Rudresha. Rudresha has a, this is the long question by Rudresha. And um, it seems this is what is intriguing for them. No, I mean, I think, uh, firstly, you have to find your own voice. I think that's very important, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think uh, people like you guys, like the JS Institute of Design, um, have to allow that to happen. Unfortunately, we have um, a lot of design schools in India popping up. Uh, and I'm not certain. And one of the reasons I'm so proud, by the way, you never introduced that about myself. I did. I'm going to do that. No, let me allow, allow me to say that, but please finish your quest answer. I just thought of it. Yeah. Uh, but what, 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 because I consider myself very privileged, right? I ended up in England on a scholarship to study in a school because I used to ride horses and I was competing at an international level and the school took me in. And from there, the journey began and I ended up in America to study architecture, which is a huge privilege. Um, and the way they teach is very different to the way they teach here. And I think, unfortunately, here, um, 
the reason I think so many of these questions are coming, and I, and I think a lot of these questions are also coming from students, is because I don't think we do a, a good enough job opening up uh, their visual perspective on things. You know, We do not make it critical that you have to travel, that you have to visit. We forget about our own culture uh, rather than encouraging uh, you know, institutions encouraging travel within India, even if we cannot make it abroad, uh, which is perfectly fine because we have so much to learn here. Um, and I think that is what helps, uh, that is what helped me um, in my college. I don't know how many of you know this, but architecture has the second largest drop uh, after medicine. And uh, so a lot of a lot of my you know friends dropped out of architecture school. They couldn't hack it. It 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 is a lot of lot of work, and I will never forget him because it is because of him I think that I continued to practice architecture. While I had a passion for it, he taught me how to be patient with my skills mm -hmm. and how to really uh, enhance them and 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 how to understand it. And it's not just a one point perspective. Um, and I think that is when you can start talking about. Um, a personality is something you have, you know, you can build on it, but, but it's, but it's intrinsic. It's a part of you. Um, and that, but, but how do you recognize that is what institute institutes and professors need to help you with. Exactly. And thank you for bringing that up. Uh, so let me uh, very proudly say Koelika is a member of our advisory board. And let me say why is she a member more than that she is a member. I think for us, it is very important to bring to the table uh, young designers who have a thought process or a vision about where design education is heading. And she, we realize, has a very unique voice, has a very strong voice, and has a very reasonable voice. And that's the reason um, we are very happy to have youngsters. And there are many members of the board who are like Koelika. Who, who are going to help us, help JS Institute of Design to go ahead and, and tackle a lot of design problems happening uh, in this particular field. So we look forward to uh, your support, Koelika, and an equal voice, let us say, you know, with uh, a kind of lot of, bring your vision forward, bring your thought process to us. And I'm very sure that's going to help the young aspirants looking forward to such a career. Okay, and okay, so, uh, you know, there are quite a few more questions, but I'm going to end it right now since we are quite a little over time. But let me um, assure all the students who are asking questions. I mean, there are quite a few Arundhati, uh, uh, I, I don't see the names on minute, Rudesh, uh, not Rudresha, Sumati. I want to just uh, want you to ask, answer just one last question about can you give suggestions to design an eco-friendly interior? <clears throat> well, um, you know, sustainability is, sustainability is not easy, but mm -hmm. um, I will tell you this, we have a study vernacular architecture. Uh, it's, I, I, it's unfortunate uh, are not a lot of to actually teach you about vernacular architecture because from it you will understand how at a very basic very very basic level you can make beautiful interiors e eco-friendly whether it is you know using uh, mud whether it is you reusing i mean believe it or not when we built one of the first projects we did we recycled a uh, swimming pool tile um, and we broke it and we did what is called a scupchi work on the chat in order to reduce the heat coming in so uh, it depends what you're trying to build, frankly, but uh, there are many, many, many ways to do eco-friendly construction these days. And um, it doesn't always necessarily come cheap also. That's another thing. Mm -hmm. um, and that is something that I feel, um, at least I in my profession want to work towards to make uh, sustainability sustainable, because that yeah. is another thing that we are uh, you know, uh, that it shouldn't just be a fad for a short while. Also, it's not, you know, it, it has to be affordable, which it is not as yet. Okay, correct. Right. So, um, uh, I am going to just ask Pragya Loga uh, Nayaki, Sumanti, Arundhati, Mudita, many, many more. 
We are just very sorry. We are not able to answer all the questions that you have asked. I know your questions still remain, but I'm going to end this today just now. Uh, and we promise Koelika will be answering these and we will be sending them to you in, in, a, in let's say by next week. But do keep in touch with us. And one of them, of course, is asking about interning with you. So Koelika, you, I hope you'll be able to um, you know, open up such opportunities for youngsters. But I do want to thank you for all the, you know, your opening up, your sharing of such your insights, your journey, your experience. This has really excited a lot. I can see the comments coming and they are very, very excited by what you have talked about. I hope they will continue to come and meet up with exciting designers like yourself. But thank you very much participants. Thank you, Koelika. And I would like to uh, you know, invite you guys to feed in the, um, fill up the feedback form about what kind of programs you're still looking forward to from GSIT in terms of webinar. The other thing I'd like to inform you is GS Institute of Design admissions are on for the August uh, term. Please feel free to call us, ask us for any information and let us know um, anything that you'd like to know from us. So thank you very much. And I do thank hope to you. meet up with you soon after the lockdown. Thank you so much. And thank you Dakshita for having me and also uh, Harshita for all the help that you gave me. Um, I just want you to know we we hire a lot of interns to the year and it's something it's we have it's we are a teaching office um, but I'm a tough uh, taskmaster so you can't come around my office to waste time but I promise you you'll get to learn a lot so if you're interested look up my website apply to us and your resume will definitely go into the pool and uh, I look forward to having you as part of the team. Thank yeah. you so much, Nian. It was so very, thank very you, cool. Koelika. Thank you very much. And I thank you, participants, for coming in. Do fill up this, the, the interviews for the postgraduate program in interior design for August term is on. And do come in and, uh, uh, and meet up with us or whenever it is possible. Bye-bye and good night. <laughs>